All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And Shalom to the elect out there pushing out this word in truth and in sincerity. All right, in this video, I want to go into the Washington Post's article titled, As Trump Fumes. Mexico showers the migrant caravan with kindness. All right. A central migrant walks holding a Mexican national flag on his way to Ma Mapastepec, Mexico. This is an article written by Joshua Partlo. Okay. I'm going to go into it a bit just to show you, give you evidence that the, the native people of the Americas are in fact Israelites, man. All right, the the true Hebrew Israelites today are the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. And when I may say Latinos and Native Americans, I, I refer to all the indigenous uh, of, of the so-called Americas, man. If uh, you know, when you read Second Ezra uh, four and Second Ezra thirteen and forty, uh, Lord willing, we'll get it. Uh, it shows that the that uh, the ten tribes uh, uh, who who are quote unquote uh, the ten lost tribes came to a land where never mankind dwelt. All right, and and back then the known the known land was Asia, Africa, Europe, and the the Middle East. Man, okay. So the first inhabitants the uh, uh, for. That that inhabited this land as a whole were the real Hebrew Israelites, you so-called Latinos and Native Americans, man. But I want to go into the article a bit and uh, and show that, man. You know, because th these people, man, they show themselves by their actions. All right, it says, Pijijapan, Mexico. Everything Pedro uh, Osman o Oyoa was wearing, from the black be black felt shoes. With the gold buckles to the shimmery blue top down, was was as new to him as he was to Mexico. The thirty-year-old Honduran corn farm, farmer was uh, had dodged sojourn in the migrant caravan. Was dressed head to toe in donated clothes. His three-year-old son Alexander played with donated toys. The rest of the family, his wife, his brothers, his two brothers, and a cousin sat on the sidewalk eating beef stew and tortillas lad ladled, ladled out for them by residents of this bustling market town in Mexico's southern Chiapas state. Okay? Here it is, man. They they found refuge. Okay? The, the, uh, the so-called Mexicans who are, uh, uh, they come from the tribe of Issachar, they gave them refuge, man. They gave them uh, uh, some relief, man. Food, clothing, okay. It says Central um, Central American migrants rest at the steps of Catholic Church in Pijia, uh, Pan in southern Mexico on Thursday as the caravan stops for the night. It says these people have been beautiful. He said, "Everyone's helping us out. Who is fin financing the caravan?" There is no sign here of George Soros or the Russians. Instead, of the responsibility of feeding, clothing, and sheltering several several thousand mig migrants has been embraced by the small Mexican towns along the route, with uh, with dissidents jumping in, into charity mode as if they are responding to a natural disaster. It was hard to walk a block in this town without seeing crates of free bottled water, uh, tables packed with ham and cheese tortillas or relief stations filled with medical supplies donated by the community to help the people on this grueling march. All right. So <laughs> there's a lot of points that I could touch here. Um, you know, pretty, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it just vexes me the whole thing about it, have, it being the Catholic church and, and, you know, and the people feeding them ham ham cheese man because our people are truly are, are truly uh falling away man all right that catholic church that was set up wasn't built by the indigenous people of that land it was built uh um through the orders uh, of the spanish conquistadors man all right 
and, and that's what what our people are now given unto. But naturally, uh, um, they're um, they're the Israelites, man. They have that law written within themselves. Matter of fact, let me just get that. All right. This is um. Uh, This is uh, Romans 2 and 14. For the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature things contained in the law. These have not the law, are a law unto themselves, man. Which show the words of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness that their thoughts uh, and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else accusing one another, man. But the point is, is a... Uh, uh, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, man, because they're Hebrew Israelites, man. All right. The Gentiles that we're talking right here, we're talking about the scattered Israelites, man. All right. I just finished the video explaining how the Lord only only deals with the nation of Israel, man. All right. And then, you know, for you, you could actually go to John uh, 7 and 35 and it, and it calls the dispersed Israelites uh, uh, um, uh, Gentiles, man. You know, matter of fact, just mention it real quick. Let's just get it. This is John 7 and 35. It says, Then the Jews um uh then the Jews among them said then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he will he go unto the dispersed amongst the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? So he just called the dispersed among the Gentiles the Gentiles. Okay, so we all know, well, I won't say we all know, but it's, it's clear and it's evident that the Israelites were scattered amongst the four corners of the earth amongst the Gentiles. Okay, well, anyways, man, going back into the topic, you know, these Israelites, man, they have the law unto themselves, man. All right, it says it's been beautiful, but yet there was a great falling away as it was written in Thessalonians, man. All right, I want to get this uh, scripture. Going to Leviticus chapter 25, verse 35. And if thy brother be waxen poor and falleth in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. Yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with thee. Take the, uh, thou no usury of him or increase, but, but fear thy power that thy brother may live with thee, man. All right. So back in the ancient days, uh, if you seen a, an Israelite, your brother, you know, even though he was a stranger or a sojourner, uh, uh, you, you were supposed to take him in, man. You know, you were supposed to uh, look after him, man, that, that, uh, that the brother can live, man. All right. But now in this society, man, people hardly, they don't even talk to each other in the streets, man. All right. Because this society is, is built off of envy, man. All right. Envy and, and, uh. And, and idol worshiping, man, you know, going after your own flesh, try, trying to, uh, uh, you know, l look out for you, you, you. All right. That, that, th that's the type of society this, this one is, man. But the Israelites, they taught something more of unity, man. And check it out. I'm going to read a little bit more. It says we're supporting them 100 percent. Rafael Trinidad. A municipal employee said as he passed out sandwiches to migrants arriving along the main road, at least here they can feel good. While President Trump is looking for ways to block the caravan at the U.S. border, Mexicans are pitching in to ease the traveler's journey. Residents along the route say they are motivated by the Catholic tradition of charity, and it wasn't the Catholic tradition of charity. The Catholic tradition well, uh, 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 was was death, destruction, and murder, man. All right. Matter of fact, if I can let's see if I get that. Okay, here we go. This is the picture that I wanted. It says, oh, shit. It's how Mexicans became Catholic, man. By the edge of the sword, man. This is the tradition that Catholicism brought, all right? But since the law is written into you Israelites, hey, you, your works declare it, man, that it's written in your hearts, man. But that's why 
the scripture says, let me get this real quick. Uh, going real slow. I got it here. This is Romans 10 and 2. For I bear them record that they have, have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge, man. All right. Not according to the 100% truth of the Heavenly Father, man. All right. So this is how you so-called Mexicans became Catholic, man. This is how you guys were given unto idol worshiping, like this lady over here in the bottom left. You know, you guys were given to idol worshiping, man. All right. That's that's the uh, a tradition of the Catholic Church, man. All right. In reality, the 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 true tradition uh, that show forth those those good works. Uh, or, or that helping work was um, the fact that you guys are Israelites, man. So back uh, to the article. It says, motivated by the Catholic tradition of charity, <clears throat> uh, a shared a, a shared familiar, familiarity with migration to the United States and a sense of solidarity in the face of Trump's anti-migrant rhetoric. While they acknowledge the caravan could be a problem if it lingered, uh, many do not seem to mind a brief stopover. It says outside her family's hardware store, uh, Cocuy uh, Cortez, 57, has set a table to feed migrants lemon tea and stew. It says using meat from her son's butcher, butcher shop down the street, her daughter was handing out fruit. My, my family has been blessed, Cortez said, and we know that we are all brothers. What God gives us, we should share. But we do it with a lot of love, she added. And that's the point, man. We are all brothers, man. Even though y'all Hondurans, y'all Guatemalans, y'all hate it when you get called Mexicans. Well, guess what, man? We're brothers, man. All right? We were all on this side of the land uh, before the conquistadors came and, and before these, before which really they're Esau Edom, man. These Edomites. Before they came and, and, and just destroyed our people, man. All right, we are the same people, man. Okay. So, anyways, man, I'm gonna end it off by going to these last scriptures and just going through through, through the Bible, man, and showing that that's the custom of the Israelites, man. All right. <clears throat> so, I'm gonna read uh, Leviticus 25:35 again. It says, and if thy brother be waxen poor and falleth in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. Yeah, thou shalt be a yeah, though he be a stranger or a sojourner that they may live with thee all right take thou not usury of him or increase but fear thy power that thy brother may live with thee and that's something that the so-called white man is not going to do man all right that's how it shows you he's a nation of pure uh, uh un in injustice decrees man unjust decrees man uh, of, of a nation filled with greed and and uh and no mercy man Okay, verse 37, it says, Thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury, nor lend him thy victuals for increase. It says, uh, I am the Lord thy God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, to give you the land of Canaan, and to be your power. And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor, and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bondman, but as a hired servant, and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee, and shall and shall serve thee unto the year of jubilee man so the lord our power he he showed us to respect one another man all right and, and to have and uh to help one another man this was the welfare uh uh the um the welfare system that the israelites showed man true uh love man love towards one another but look at what you have here man trump and edomite you know he, he gives out fumes, but the Israelites within themselves, they show that kindness, man. Because that's that law written within themselves. All right? Having, having that zeal of the Most High, but not according to full knowledge, man. That's why they're giving unto that, that Catholicism. That's why they're handing out ham, that, that pork, which was commanded us not to eat, man. But at the end of the day, this shows that we're brothers, man. All right? Try to hit two more scriptures and that off. This is Judges chapter 19, verse 10. But the man, uh, this is an account with, um, you know, uh, an Israelite. Um, if I, 
I'm not mistaken, I believe he was a he was a uh, it was a Levite. Yeah. Yup, it was a Levite who took him a, a, a concubine, man. All right. She played the harlot with him. He went and got and got her. But on his way back, it says, but the man would not tarry that night. But he rose up and departed and came over against Je Jebus, Jebus, which is in Jerusalem. And there were with him two asses saddled. Uh, and there were with him two asses saddled. His concubine also was with him. And when they were by Jebus, the day was far spent. And the servant said unto his master, Come, I pray thee, and let us turn in un, into the city of the Jebusites and lodge in it. And his master said unto him, We will not turn aside hither into the city of a stranger that is not of the children of Israel. We will pass over to Gebeah. And that's the point. That's the point, man. Israel knew... Uh, you know that that the laws uh, uh, stated that they should look after one another, man. That's why he didn't want to go uh, lodge with the Jebusites, which are Canaanites. He went to go uh, lodge with the children of Israel, and he said unto his servant, "Come and let us draw near one of the uh, to one of these places to lodge all night in Gebeah and in Ramah." And they passed on and went their way, and the sun went down upon them. When they were by Gebeah, 